Well, long live your turtle here, and I know this is the turtle channel, but I wanted to show you guys another reptile I have. His name is Santiago. He's a veiled chameleon. He's about five years old, and he lives in this setup behind me. Let's play a quick game of I Spy. Can you spy Santiago in his setup right now? If you found an awesome job, let's check out Santiago's setup, shall we? All right, so let's go over my Veiled Chameleon setup. I'll give you a close-up in one second of everything that goes on in this setup, but I wanna talk about the overall enclosure in general first. So Santiago's living in a four foot tall by two foot by two foot Repti Breeze cage. So what that means is all the sides are screen cages and the top's a screen cage. The bottom obviously is not a cage. If you search online, it's definitely a debatable subject on whether a chameleon needs a fully caged open air screen or they can do a fully glassed enclosure. Now for veiled chameleons, it's definitely suggested that you get an open air screen cage. And this helps prevent respiratory infections that can happen when you just have stale air that's getting all this moisture and just sitting in the enclosure 24 seven. You want that air to be pushed out by just natural airflow and a Repti Breeze cage helps with that. However, I wanna make a point here. I have three of my sides covered with acrylic sheets. So why do I have acrylic sheets on my sides of my cages? The reason I have these acrylic sheets on three sides of my open air screen for a veiled chameleon is another really important characteristic that you need to know about if you're going to be taking care of a chameleon, and that is humidity. It's extremely important that you understand what the requirements of humidity are for your chameleon. It ranges for different types of chameleons. For veiled chameleons, you're looking at around an average humidity of 50%, but you want that to fluctuate, maybe going to 70 to 80 once in a while throughout the day, uh, even dropping lower than that. However, I live in Colorado and the relative humidity here is between like 20 to 40%, 40 is like really high, and that's just too low for a chameleon. Keeping it a completely open screen is just gonna be almost impossible to keep it at the right humidity because I'm gonna to have to keep a misting system or a fogger or humidifier on all the time in order to keep the humidity above its natural state of just the room in general. So to combat that in a very typical way to handle this is to cover a portion of your enclosure with acrylic sheets. Obviously the less the better. I unfortunately have to do three sides of mine, but it still gives you the front and the top for plenty of airflow. It's kind of a balance here. Yes, you wanna keep that airflow going to prevent that respiratory infection we were talking about, but you also really need to keep that humidity at the right level, otherwise your chameleon will get sick in a lot of other ways. So that's our cage. You'll notice when we take a closer look at this that on the two sides facing the corner of my walls here, I actually have a giant tapestry that I bought online for really cheap and folded up so that it fit as a cool looking jungle background on the side of the cage that really I don't wanna see through to the wall on my bookcase there. And on this side, it's open to my living room, so it's just a clear acrylic sheet. And of course, the front is open as well. And before we dive in here, I just wanna note that I kind of had a hard time finding certain things for chameleons over the years, like backgrounds for cages, or like stands and drip trays that handle moisture falling down your cage well. Uh, definitely turn into kind of some DIY projects that we're gonna go over in a second uh, that work for me. But let's take a closer look at Mr. Santiago's home. Let's do it. All right, let's take a closer look at Mr. Santiago there, looking beautiful on the top. Let's open this screen door. There's two little latches. Gotta have that door, otherwise your chameleon will escape. Santiago has done so. And he can be kind of hard to find sometimes. He finds the weird places to hide. So, here's Santiago. He's beautiful, he's got that crown. If you can see it, he's got that little spur on his back leg. That's an obvious way to tell that he's male. Also a large crown like he has, and he's relatively big. I'll admit, he definitely isn't a huge fan of me. He'll eat out of my hand, but you have to do some trickery in order to get him on your hand. Although he clearly likes the camera, big limelight guy. But let's talk about what we got in here. You can see that background a little better. It's just that jungle tapestry I have wrapped around the outside. 
that came in really handy. It was only $15 versus if you're looking at like this fancy kind of reptile bark or backgrounds that really aren't meant for whatever. They're just, they're way more expensive because it's a big, big size to fill in there that four foot tall by two foot by two sides. It's, you're just gonna have a hard time finding that. However, let's talk about more interesting things. So let's see. So you'll notice in general here, I have a mixture between living and fake plants and sticks. So you'll notice that Santiago is hanging out on a fake vine and then he's got a foot on this stick here with a real moss on it. You also notice this cool moss vine here and that has living moss on it and it's wrapped around a fake vine. But a cool part about this vine is it holds moisture well and it's actually edible if uh, Santiago wants to eat it. Uh, I haven't really seen him do that, but it can be an edible thing for a chameleon. So the method I use to actually attach all of these vines and plants and stuff is a little more rudimentary than you might think. I just took these twisty ties that you get from the bread you'll buy at the supermarket, and I just kind of pry it through either just the cage or I have it up here on this little plastic piece that you use to install this nozzle here, but like on this corner, we've got just this vine hanging off of that little tie up here. We got more, I have a couple zip ties in there too, but I try to just hide it so you don't really notice that. Now, how I like to set up all this stuff is you'll see that I kind of have this center area where there's this stick going across. Now this is Santiago's basking area. All right, so Santiago's a chameleon and chameleons are reptiles and reptiles are cold-blooded and require external heat sources to regulate their body temperature. And they need to regulate their body temperature to keep a healthy metabolism and, you know, live their life. So in the wild, that is simply just the sun providing that heat and any other UV radiation required. However, when it comes to an enclosure that's inside and not directly in the sun, you need something that's going to provide the similar sunlight that a chameleon would normally get in the wild. And what I use is this deep dome and the bulb I use is a mercury vapor bulb. So why I love the mercury vapor bulb is it emits two of the essential UV radiations that a chameleon requires, and that is UVA heat and UVB. Both of those are required for a successful basking chameleon. And that bulb emits that. You can also do a sort of double light setup where you'd have a heat bulb and then that UVB bulb. Uh, but I just like it all being in one spot, coming out of one lamp into the same area. I just know that Santiago is gonna get everything he needs right onto his basking spot right here. So like I said, this area right here is the basking area. It's directly under our lamp. And the reason it's about two thirds uh, up from the bottom of the cage is because this is about a 100 watt lamp. So I get the perfect basking temperature right here where Santiago will be basking and that works for the UVB as well. Uh, I don't have anything between there and the top of the cage here because you'll see that my lamp is directly on top of the cage. So if there was a branch here, Santiago might go there and he would probably burn himself and injure himself because he's not realizing how hot and dangerous that actually is. He doesn't climb on the cage sidewalls like some chameleons will. That's typically a sign that you don't have enough stuff for your chameleon to climb on. Uh, but that just makes it so I'm not worried about him being uh, climbing right here. And I don't need to take this a little higher. I've also noticed that Santiago is not a huge adventure. And losing the space right here uh, is not a big loss for him. Because he kind of just finds his corners. And maybe we'll move around a little bit. But he doesn't use this whole space even though I tried to set it up so that he could. Now talking more about our faker plants here, I have this vine that's not supportive enough for a chameleon to actually hold on to, but it wraps around all of my thicker vines that are, and that just gives more coverage and a more natural look to this cage itself. Uh, up here, I have this fake plant like that is not useful for him, but it looks good in the corner and it's gonna make him look, feel a little more at home and his colors are just gonna blend in so much better. So you'll notice Santiago's hanging out in the back top of the cage. He loves that spot. He loves up here on this vine. Those are his favorite spots. He loves the high ground. This is a very common trait with chameleons is to get as high as they can. I've actually let my chameleon roam the house before and he just climbed the nearest shade or plant and just tried to get as high as absolutely possible. Loves the high ground. Great Jedi training. Good job, Santiago. And 
it's a great spot too because I can see him so well and I feel like he just found it as a safe spot even though it's just so visible. <laughs> so joke's on him, but as long as he likes it, I'm not going to stop him. All right, so back here, it's hard to see. I'll get some light here, but you'll see I have a little nozzle and that is where my mist nozzle is. And that nozzle is connected to a hose that goes down to the bottom into my stand. We'll check that out in a second. But that nozzle sprays a fine mist over our entire enclosure here. It coats all the leaves and puts droplets on the leaves. And I do that several times a day. So like I said before, humidity is extremely important for the proper care of chameleons. Also, hydration is. Just like every living thing, you need to drink. So when I have this mist system going, it puts lots of droplets everywhere. It might even spray Santiago directly. And that's how he hydrates. He drinks it off of sitting leaves or himself if he's gotten wet himself. But they typically need this water to either be look like it's moving, like a dripper system, or have it like a natural spot where it looks fresh. They typically don't just drink out of a dish. That would be lucky if your chameleon would do that. So that one nozzle is enough to just spray out everywhere onto our enclosure and coat everything as it needs to. So let's move a little bit further down and Sitting on the base of our cage, I have two live plants. As you can see in the back here, I have an umbrella tree. This is actually edible for chameleons and they really enjoy it. And he's lots of light, so I have it set up so our basking platform is right over it. And it also gets misted by our sprayer and then I'll even water it myself once in a while just to make sure it gets enough water. But it looks awesome. It's kind of like a jungly looking plant. The other plant I have here is a croton. This is another high light plant, but Again, it's under our basking lamp and it looks really jungly and cool. Uh, it's debatable whether this is actually edible, but Santiago doesn't eat it. And it's been used uh, by people on forums and just doing research all the time with chameleons. They just say to watch out if your chameleon is constantly eating it. Uh, my chameleon doesn't touch it, so I'm not worried about it at all. I think he just loves how it looks in the enclosure. Uh, another awesome plant that I've kept before is the ficus tree. That's another edible plant that a chameleon can eat and enjoy. But the ficus tree I had was basically chewed to a stump because Santiago just liked it too much and really just wasn't worth it anymore for me to keep that ficus tree in there. So I'm trying out these two. I've always had a success with this umbrella tree. It does really well um, in these enclosures and Santiago doesn't absolutely butcher it. Thanks, Santiago. I want to note live plants. Yes, they're kind of a hassle if you have a hard time keeping them in your chameleon setup, but they actually keep humidity in your setup really well. So yes, they can be edible, which is great. They look really good and natural in your setup and they keep humidity. So they're definitely a lot of pros to keeping live plants. Do it if you can. Uh, I don't think your chameleon will ever complain. I just put the plants in these plastic bins I got from the hardware store and put a little repti bark on top to make it look a little better and hold that soil. And then you probably just saw it, but I have this drip plant here. Now, I told you before that Santiago likes to drink off of leaves or get sprayed directly for his hydration. However, I want to back up because there's not always going to be that perfect drip or that perfect spray. So I have a drip plant and this just basically has a little reservoir dish. This is just a reptile feeding dish that I used that I filled with water. This plant goes inside of that dish. There's a little powered water pump there and that just pushes water to the top leaf here. The water comes down and drips onto the three leaves that make up this little dripper. I've seen Santiago drink out of this once in a while uh, because obviously he's thirsty and didn't get it from that initial spray. It's really good to have a nice backup system for water for your chameleon. There are those drip containers that are very popular for the same reason. The only thing I don't like about those is they're going to run out eventually. So if you do forget about it or something happens where it just all drips out, you're gonna be out of water. Whereas here, as long as your leaves are dripping into that reservoir, it's gonna go on forever as long as you don't lose power. And then we'll talk about my final emergency way to get moisture and hydration for your chameleon in a second. Let's take a step back. I'm gonna turn on the light real quick the stand that this cage is on real quick. So there is a sheet that comes with this cage that's really flexible and relatively terrible at holding water. So I just use that and I put these acrylic tiles on it to make it look good because otherwise it looks like some just plastic sheet that really doesn't look visually pleasing at all. So these vinyl tiles make it look just quite a bit better. 
than what it originally comes as. Now let's talk about the stand I built. So this is basically a wooden tray that this cage is sitting in. It goes down about an inch and I have painted this and I put more of this acrylic and siliconed basically the bottom of this tray so it's waterproof. Now this was really important, especially when I lived in a really humid environment back in New England. It was really humid, so water would basically pool down here eventually and it would just be so moist that if you had just some regular wood or something else that this is sitting on, it's gonna get soaking wet or even start to mold. But with my setup here, this is basically waterproofed on the inside. So any buildup of water, if it does happen, it won't cause major damage to the overall stand and it won't smell bad or do anything like that. So that's why I built this little tray for my cage itself. For some reason, I can't find anything online or in the past that would actually fulfill this. So yeah, I had to build it myself. It wasn't too bad. You just have these one and a half inch by three quarter inch uh, pieces of wood and then you have a big piece of plywood that acts in the inside as your platform and then you rest this whole thing and recess it into that platform and then you're good. It also helps hold the acrylic down here and on the sides and the back inside of that overall enclosure. Taking a step back you'll see another thing that I made and it basically custom fit with this tray that I built but it's just a DIY side table essentially. It's just a big square with um, two boards on top and bottom and then some bigger boards that make up the walls. I have this big hinged door that gives you access to the underside. And then on the inside is completely hollow to put in whatever you need. So yeah, you could use other furniture that might fulfill this. Just be careful because there's a lot of humidity and moisture that this stand is gonna come in contact with. I painted it with outdoor exterior paint just to handle that better. And even still, I have to clean it once in a while. And if there's a little mold, get that stuff off immediately. It's not good. Let's take a look at the inner workings of our misting system and powered items. So you'll see in here, I have a big bucket. And what that is, it's basically a water reservoir for my mist system. I use the Mist King misting pump. And this thing has given me zero troubles in five years. Highly recommend it. A little expensive, more than those foggers. It's awesome because it comes with this little timer where you can program exactly how many times and how long you want the water to be sprayed in the enclosure for. Like I said, this is extremely important for keeping humidity. So there's definitely a trial and error phase to figure out how many sprays and how long during the day this needs to happen. But once you get it, it's basically, I never have to touch this again and the mist system is going to do it all for me so I don't have to worry about the enclosure being the right humidity. Obviously check it once in a while, use a humidity gauge. I have one somewhere um, and I check it probably like once a month just to make sure everything is still working well. But yeah, this Mist King system is awesome and has never given me any issues over the five years. So I use this ZooMed timed outlet and it's an analog timer so you can time using these little push pins exactly how long you want everything to be on for four of the outlets here. The other four are just typical outlets that are on all the time. So my water pump that we use for that drip plan I showed you and our misting system are always on because the misting system has its own timer and the water plant is always going. And then I have my basking lamp that is timed by this timer here. You can get smaller versions of this since I only have one outlet being used, but I had this lying around so it was perfect for the job. So I told you I had one more backup method of hydrating my chameleon, and that is this spray bottle. If you lose power, my drip plant is no longer gonna work. My misting system's not gonna work. You need to have another backup just in case, and this spray bottle will do the job. It's basically a mister. Just spray, spray away if it's required. I spray him directly if there's literally no water sources for him. Um, and that will just help him keep hydrated and then spray the entire enclosure a lot just to keep that moisture in. So now I wanna talk about what I feed my chameleon. I feed my chameleon crickets. It's his staple diet. And basically I get large crickets from the market. We can see that unfortunately a couple have passed away a little bit early and not in my chameleon's mouth, uh, which happens. But yes, I get him large crickets from the pet store and I feed the crickets this high calcium cricket diet food uh, as they await being dinner. And then I also have to hydrate them and I use this cricket quencher 
both this quencher and the food are calcium fortified, which of course you want to ensure that your chameleon is getting. So if any of you have dealt with crickets before as a food source for your reptile, you'll know that they're amazing at drowning themselves. And that's the reason why this cricket quencher food exists. It's like this gel water, essentially. Uh, Gatorade, I guess you could call it, because it has a couple added benefits, um, mostly for your chameleon. <laughs> but, but yeah, to that point, I forgot to mention, you have this open water source here for this drip plant. Crickets will, of course, once in a while, find their way to this amazing oasis of water to, of course, drown themselves. So I have to clean this out every couple of days. So this is essentially standing water. So you gotta make sure this is clean uh, and bacteria and disease aren't building up in this due to dead crickets and poop getting in there and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, I use this cricket container. It's awesome because crickets kind of like to hide or hang out in darker areas. So they have these black tubes, crickets, nonchalantly will hang out in here. You can actually look down this clear tube to see if they're in there. Oh, hello. They are, they're hanging out in their little dark tube house. Little do they know, that's the perfect way for me to get these crickets into our enclosure. So, those crickets, good luck to you. The rest, they'll await their destiny. So I said that crickets are the staple diet, but I also like to have giant mealworms on hand. This helps me vary my chameleon's diet. Uh, once in a while, I'll feed these to him. It's also a backup food. It's very important to have some backups when it comes to chameleons. Like I said, for hydration, you need to have some backups. When it comes to food, you need to have backups. Chameleons can be pretty picky and they like to eat moving food. So these mealworms move, crickets of course move. And I've run into the problem where I've gone to my local pet stores and they just don't have crickets. And it can be one to even two weeks once where I could not get crickets. I have three Petcos and three Pet Smarts and a reptile store. There was a time where none of them were carrying any crickets. So you need to have some sort of backup food source. And for me, it's these giant mealworms. These are much easier for stores to take care of because they can be refrigerated, which kind of just slows down the life process of these worms. Um, so I keep them in my refrigerator as backups all the time in case anything happens with cricket stock. And the method I use to actually feed them is I put them in this other old tray that I have, and I just put this tray somewhere near the top of the cage where Santiago can look in, see these squirming worms, and just go to town for this awesome, delicious little snack. So you'll see inside here, you have these worms are moving quite slow because it's cold, but there they are. Definitely get giant ones for full grown chameleons. The other ones are very small and you'll need a lot of them to quench that thirst for worms. And other than that, I use this RepTi-Safe water conditioner and that's just for that bowl of water that we use there and for my reservoir of misting water. That just ensures chlorines out and any other impurities that should not be in water for chameleons is gone. And the only thing I'm back here, what's this? We just have a spray bottle and that's just to spray the bottom of my cage once in a while when it gets all crappy and when it gets a little bit smelly because you know chameleons they defecate just like all of us do and that just falls down onto leaves and basically ends up on the bottom eventually. And so, yeah, just wipe that up and you're good to go. And that's about it, you guys. Oh, there's a little grass mat that I use in the back there. That's just a turf I got. It's a 12 by 12 turf piece. And I kind of just like the look of it. And if Santiago does want to go adventure, he can have his little grass patch down there. All right, you guys, so I got Santiago out of the cage, took a little bit of trickery, one hand here, the other hand slipped under. He doesn't like this that much. He hasn't changed to a dark color, which means he's not overly stressed, but he doesn't like me as a person, personally. So I'm gonna make this quick for him. Please do your research before you get a chameleon like Mr. Santiago here. They have a lot of little requirements that are above and beyond most pets that you'll be able to get at a pet store. Like I said before, you got humidity, you got living, moving food, you have hydration, that can be a problem. You gotta have an adequate basking area, an enclosure where your chameleon can crawl around and regulate their body temperature, but also have a safe space to call home. It needs to be big enough. You need to have a misting system. You need to have all sorts of little things that are considered by all the big pet stores as an advanced species to take care of. Just keep that in mind. Do your research, get some books, Know what you're getting before you make your
purchase of this awesome creature. This is Mr. Santiago. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, comment. See ya! Love to high ground, great Jedi training, sick head.